I believe we are live. I always find when I do lives that it can take a couple of seconds for it to load and then it like pre-recorded. Robin, do you see? Perfect, we're up on Facebook, we're live on Facebook. Hi everybody, welcome to our first online Facebook live. Uh, we have got the incredible Catherine Gallagher here, one of our uh, speakers for the Thousand Sons Online Summit that we have coming up in December. Catherine is a restorative yoga teacher and has a teach mentorship program that is called the Empower Program. Um, Catherine, hi, welcome. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. We are really, really excited to um, get to know you more and give the audience a little bit of an idea about what you're gonna be bringing to the event that we have coming up in December. Um, before we jump into the theme of resilience, which is sort of the theme that sort of spurred the event that we have coming up, I'd love for you to give everyone a little bit of an introduction and uh, explain a little bit about this amazing program that you have developed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alice and Robin. I'm really, really honored to be here. And thank you, Surya Leela, A Thousand Sons for putting on this event. Uh, yeah, really grateful to talk to you this morning. So a little bit about my background uh, to put everything in a bit more context. Um, so initially started out my career as a barrister in London, had a legal career, very, very different life. Uh, I then moved across into marketing, working for a global corporate finance business. And it was at that point in my life that I found yoga, or I, I feel like yoga found me, really, to be honest. And I was struggling a lot with anxiety, knowing that there was a lot missing in my life, feeling a bit empty, a bit lost. And I'd moved out of the city and was commuting in and out and a studio popped up just around the corner. And that was really where everything began. But I say that my, my childhood had been very spiritual. Uh, I'd learned to meditate at a very young age and I'd always been super interested in world religions and philosophy. So it all kind of came full circle and tied together. And I became, you know, so passionate about my practice, so dedicated, and it, it really helped me so much at a quite a dark time in my life. Um, so it was wonderful to then practice and train eventually and come across Surya Leela later down the path. And yeah, finding myself here today is a bit of a dream come true, really. Um, you always wonder how did I get here on such a strange winding path, but I think that is all of our lives really, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's such a time to sort of look back and see see how things have sort of come together. Um, so thinking about this theme resilience, I know that the, you know, the term resilience is sort of held true to you and is weaved into a lot about the work that you do. So I'd love you to sort of give us a little description or an explanation about what resilience means to you. Um, and how that how you sort of weave that into into the work that you do mm, of course well, such a powerful theme so resilience for me when i when i think about that word what does that mean to me in my life it would be the ability to bounce back and how quickly can we do that but we also don't want to rush we want to walk before we run and we need to digest what's happened to us, process it. And that's, you know, why I love restorative yoga so much. It's the chance to rest and digest and really allow your body on different levels to process everything you're going through. But then how can you find the strength to come back after facing trauma? And I help teachers as well on my Empower program to really understand how to work within this industry, which may come across from the outside, like, really fun and really easy, easy breezy and, you know, perfect lifestyle. But it's a bit of a jungle, this industry, to be honest. And I suffered so many setbacks in business. I took a lot of risks, um, had some wonderful collaborations, some awful collaborations, you know, taken advantage of by studios, having a really poor money heart set or, you know, lack mentality, imposter syndrome. These are all huge topics that come up for all yoga teachers, I think, and also across the board in every career, in every life. 
Um, but these are the things that I work with, with the teachers that I mentor. Um, and it's community, it's building community to, to get through this path, this journey together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've hit on some really important and powerful points. And I think there's these things, you know, occur in our life. You mentioned imposter syndrome. And um, these are things that can occur across the board. You don't necessarily have to be a wellness professional or a yoga teacher to experience that. And I think during the year that we are all in right now, being able to face these things head on and understand how that we can um, support ourselves you know, in any year, but this year maybe more especially, being able to have the tools to support us get through that because those setbacks can be more de detrimental maybe this year than other years. So really learning those tools of resilience are going to be, you know, so much more beneficial for us going forward. Um, so you mentioned that your yoga has been one of your best tools for uh, staying resilient. Um, do, you, what, do you have any other tools or do you want to go into a little bit of detail about how how this helps you build resilience in your life? Of course, so starting with the yoga, I've mentioned restorative yoga, which is a real passion of mine and it's the style that I predominantly teach. I'm trained in other styles, but I really do love restorative. And because it's that chance to slow down, and it was only when I started teaching, or no, sorry, practicing restorative yoga that a teacher said to me, it's okay to slow down and resting is your birthright. I'd, I'd never been told this, and I was in my 20s, and you know, I got through my whole life feeling guilty about slowing down, always wanting to do, 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 you know, be in that yang energy, that linear, you know, going from A to B, need to achieve success, but actually the yin essence, or you could say the gentle, the moon essence, I know mainly yogis on here, so you know what I'm talking about, um, so beautiful to allow yourself to be in that yin essence. And as well as on the mat, I try to live that way off the mat. So in my business, this year has been about doing so much less, saying no much mm. more, and that's okay to say mm. no. If the offer doesn't sit well with me or I don't feel it aligns with me, then no thank you and yes please to other things that do work for me or I choose and I've streamlined all my offerings. I've made everything so much clearer and I also work on making the most efficient use of my time because the lifestyle I want is only to work a few hours a day. But that means when I work, it's really targeted and focused on my key projects. I'm, I'm checking I'm not leaking and spilling energy out anywhere. And I have really healthy boundaries around when I work, who I work with, the amount that I will work for. And I really have had to stay very strong in holding those boundaries. And I, I don't think if I didn't embody that myself, I couldn't mentor other teachers on this because I really have to feel it within my own body. My nervous system has had to get through those you know, changes in letting go of the past way of working and it's really scary it's very scary and a shock to your system to up level yourself to say no to people to to say what your price is and hold firm to it because what would be easy would be to to drop the price to to try to please everyone to give in and um it's not it's not uh taking real care of yourself or standing in your own self-worth to behave that way so often what I say can be really triggering, really challenging. Uh, but, you know, I'm not here to, to to please people. I'm here to speak my truth. So that is that is that uh, that's helped me so much to to be in that yin essence and that kind of feminine rising energy and to, to share that with others. And I would say another way uh, to keep, help yourself coming back coming back to you and being in alignment is to have a really solid routine of mm. some sort because the world is chaotic at the moment. Well, the world is always chaos. That's the nature of, you know, creation and we're always in flux, but to have something that you do every day just to make you feel in alignment, whether that's waking up, lighting a candle or making lemon water, or you might do, self body massage or tongue scraping or oil pulling or any of your little habits these atomic habits can really change the trajectory of your day 
to think if you can hold true to those those routines that make you feel well and try to repeat them daily. It may even be just making your bed beautifully and taking a second longer to spritz your room with a nice aroma or, you know, taking that extra bit of time to, to get yourself ready in the morning. It doesn't have to be hours. But if you haven't read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, that would be one to start with that will help you consider your routine, your, your general habits and how it can really just like tiny changes can set you up to success or whatever your definition of success is. Oh, wow. I mean, everything that you just said, so powerful and so incredible mm -hmm. that these are things that you mentor people with. Um, what I would love my next question before we kind of go on to the questions that we're getting in from the audience is, what are you what, of everything that you said sounds incredible what will, was this what you'll be bringing to the event i know you'll be leading some yoga but you're also going to be doing some talks and workshops so will you give us a little insider scoop into what you'll be bringing for the thousand sons online event in december yes i'm so excited so i've done a lecture on empowerment as that's something i specialize in talking a lot more in detail about what i've just mentioned um, and other ways to take care of yourself. But when I say take care of yourself, I don't, I don't mean just kind of the bubble bath and a glass of wine. Like those are nice, that's great. <laughs> I'm talking about real self-care, which is healthy boundaries with people and holding mm. on to them. So if, if you establish your boundary, there is a consequence if, if that's not met. So it's following through and knowing what is the consequence. Is it, if you continue to talk to me that way, I will ask you to leave or I will leave or just an example, something like that. But how are you really showing up for yourself? How are you showing up in your relationships? How are you allowing other people to treat you or talk to you? So a lot more on that and building that sense of self power and also confidence in yourself, higher self esteem. Uh, so we have a lecture on that, which was or, or was an interview with Joanna, lovely Joanna there. And I'm also offering a 75 minute restorative yoga and yoga nidra class for everyone with the theme of empowerment. So how can we first cultivate a sense of being feeling empowered within ourselves on the mat? And then the magic of yoga happens off the mat. So we're taking everything we've created on the mat into the world and hopefully elevating everyone else around us because we filled our cup first. Amazing. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm already really <laughs> excited for this. And I'm really looking forward to be able to having uh, some more chats with you in the coming weeks before the event as well. Um, I'm just gonna pass over to Robin and see if we've had any questions come in from the audience. We have, we have. Um, we've had someone called Anna, um, she just asked, how has it been during this time for Catherine to cope with the lockdown and how has COVID transformed her life? Oh, thank you for the question, mm. Anna. It's been, I'm not going to lie, it's been really hard. I think that's across the board. Um, there were moments of lockdown that were wonderful being with my family, but I've had quite a nomadic life for the last three years, traveling all over the world. I've lived in different countries. I've lived in Morocco, Italy, Spain, um, a different part of the UK to where I am now. So it's felt extremely grounding to come back and literally be in one place, which is not normal for me. But I do feel that sense of, um, I can't just get myself to the airport and go somewhere, but maybe that's a good thing. So I, I love the effect that it's had on everyone starting to slow down and see the value in stillness. I, I always felt that was so overlooked in our culture. And what was uh, what seemed valued and applauded was the go, go, go. And I'm always so busy this night. I have this class that I'm going for drinks this night. And you just never stop. It's this relentless wheel of I must be out there doing things. Whereas restorative taught me to, to slow down. Uh, and you know take time for myself but in terms of business I've been very fortunate in that I've completely pivoted online and I now help teachers to do that successfully so sustainable income 
that comes from having the right sort of heart set mentality around money as well and abundance which is so out there and I really look at the the shift in the industry as a good thing for many of us because I had many teachers coming to me saying oh my god what am I going to do you know I've lost everything I was like really do you not see the potential here that you are now a global international yoga teacher if you want to be like we have this amazing tool called the world wide web like why <laughs> do you do it? <laughs> you know? so i invest a huge amount of um what i make in continuing to learn i do a lot of um i have my own mentor i have my own business coach I'm always putting myself in online communities of like-minded fempreneur women who are, you know, elevating the energy. Because if I were to seek advice from um, broke yoga teachers or yoga teachers who feel that there is no possibility here or, you know, just that different mindset, that's that's really going to bring my energy down and that's not the space I want to be in. So that's one of my healthy boundaries in you know, who do I allow into my kind of space? But I make sure that I surround myself with community that's going to bolster the message that I want to put out there and also embody. So uh, it's been, yeah, it's been a journey. But I would say one thing that's helped me a lot and may help others on this is in terms of resilience, fall in love with failing. Truly fall in love with failing because failing is your biggest success. I've tried things throughout the last months, launching passive income courses online that have been a commercial flop, you could say, didn't sell very many units, but I tried and I learned so much out of it. And then I know what doesn't work for me, so I'm gonna do something else. But resilience, you really need to be persistent as well with yourself, so it's like, you continue anyway, even if you know you're going to fall down sometimes. Even if you're going to lose sometimes, you're going to fail. Like, love that. And that's also the spiritual journey. It's falling in love with both happiness and sadness, because that's life in all of its, all of its spheres, all of its elements. And we know it isn't just one way. We're riding the wave constantly. So one thing that also helped... <laughs> I could go on about this, so I'm realizing how much is in my mind, is that I'm a really keen surfer when I get the chance. So we're completely out of control of the wave. The wave is coming in different forms, different conditions. But what we can learn is to steer the board or control the board. So we can build techniques, we can learn maneuvers, we can learn different skills. To, to ride that wave as it comes. And that's something that I really try to do by investing in self-improvement and learning new things, how to use the internet for my business, um, always building community and knowing who it is I really want to, to work with, being super clear on what my offerings are and who I want to work with. Uh, and yeah, rather than training after training in terms of yoga, I now tend to invest more in mentorship or business work. Wow, Catherine, this is incredible. I'm in awe of everything that you said and it sounds like you know, you've know you got the tools, you've had to learn the tools yourself to build that resilient life. And it really sounds like, you know, despite the year that we've had, you've got that groundwork and those foundations of resilience within you. And I think, you know, this is why you've been invited to be part of this event, to share your wisdom with everybody. Um, I'm super excited. I feel like I've learned so much already just from talking to you today. Your quote about failing, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. I think we might- One last comment in, if you've got a bit of extra time. Um, we've had Laura, thanks Laura. She says, hi, Catherine, do you see resilience as a skill to develop? Very much so, yes, very much. I think we all have an innate ability within us, but it's like building a spiritual muscle. I, I say spiritual because that's the way I understand life and the way I live my life. Um, the other option, if you fall down, would be to stay down, right? So I think all of us have within us this sense of 
rising back up and also our minds can adapt so quickly to new situations like look at the look at humanity now if you told us all a year ago where we'd be I'm not sure we would believe that or if we'd even survive this but the way we've adapted so I definitely think it's a skill set and but you have to be prepared to do the work it's not gonna fall into your lap so it takes for me, real daily dedication and commitment to stick to my atomic habits, my, my routine, choosing to pick up a book and learn something rather than put on Netflix, which is so much easier. And often I do do that. It's not like I'm saying I'm perfect or anything, but it's that awareness of, okay, how am I using my time? Is that a good use of my time? Is that a good person for me to be around? Is that a nice thing for me to say? It's, it's the constant awareness and that's that's yoga as well. It's not just on the mat being aware of our breath. It, it's all day, every day, and it takes such commitment, such deep inner work. But if you're willing to do the work, I think the richness of your life just improves drastically. Mm, totally. It's like you can really feel the depths of what you're practicing on your mat into your daily life the more that you have that regular practice as well it just seems more effortless and things open up to you more so that's really beautiful that you can tie that into resilience as well maybe inspiring for some people that are starting yoga and just beginning definitely mm -hmm. amazing well I think we uh, have come to the end of our incredible interview with you. We wanted to understand a little bit more about what you would be bringing and you have really, really gone above and beyond in showing us what you have achieved already and what you'll be able to share with everybody as well during the event. Um, we're super excited to have you come on and host another live with us. And of course, we're incredibly excited about having you and having your um, your commitment to join us for the online event in December. So Catherine, thank you so, 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 so much. It has been really an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. Um, and we are so excited to have you join us in December. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here as well. Thank you for your time. Thanks guys. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Take care. See you.